Hello and welcome to another episode of Sushi and a Swordfish. You're here with Sushi for our final look at the year 2021 of the movies I watched. This is our December list and we're going to be finally able to wrap up everything here. And so we're going to jump right in and have a little bit of fun. All right, we're starting with Two Guns. This is a Denzel Washington, Mark Wahlberg. I must have been on a Denzel Washington kick because I know there was a couple of Denzel Washington movies here and there over the past few months that we looked at. I'm throwing it right into OK USA. It's a fun, just kind of over the top movie. Um, kind of a complete opposite of Safe House. Safe House was far more serious and try to kind of be a bit more grounded. And this does have a level of being grounded as well, but it's just a bit more, um, just a bit more goofy, especially in the dialogue and so forth. But if you're looking for something that's just kind of a fun action movie, maybe a bit of a throwback to sort of those over the top um, 80 style, early 90s style films, uh, you probably enjoy this. Next we have Army of Darkness. Um, I, wow, I think I'm going to go out top dog for this one. I know this movie had its problems just with um, finances and this and that and getting it off the ground and getting it going and everything. And um, But it's, it's just, it's a fun movie. And it's by far the most polished of the Evil Dead series. It has the biggest budget and so forth. And um, I just like the setting too. It is fun that the first two movies um, have a very simplistic, I guess, um, plot and sort of are only confined into one space. This movie ventures further out and just basically takes a modern day person and dropping them in the past and it's just really well done and it's fun and I can you can see Bruce Campbell seems like he was having a lot of fun with this one. It is by far the more, sorry, the most uh, comedic of the three as well. I think you could make a good debate between uh, the second movie, Evil Dead 2, but Evil Dead 2 still kind of has a pretty strong horror element. Not as strong as the first movie, like the first movie is very much just basically a straight horror movie and the second movie kind of almost goes between like, I don't know, maybe 60-70% horror-ish, and then a, a good chunk of it is um, uh, more of a comedy, like plates being smashed on the face and things like that, and cutting off the, the hand and so forth. There's just a lot of like humorous, it's dark humor, but it's humorous, but this one definitely has a dark humor edge to it, but has probably some of the most quotable lines out of the franchise too. Uh, really, really fun movie. All right, we have Coming to America. Um, I know this is a pretty well-regarded movie, but I'm just putting an OK USA. There's some some fun parts for sure, and some pretty funny lines, um, and just some some of those sort of fish out of water type um, elements to the movie. I found that uh, Arsenio Hall is a really good sort of sidekick to Eddie Murphy's character, and he's constantly questioning him. Just Eddie Murphy's character is so joyous and so um, happy to leave the lifestyle that he once lived. And, um, Arsenio Hall is really just, are you sure you want to be doing all of these things? <laughs> you sure you want to work at a fast food restaurant? Like you're a king, you don't need to do this. And he's like, I'm sure everything's like, I'm sure. And he, <laughs> he really subjects himself to some, some very weird sort of things in his life and people swearing at him on the street and he's swearing back, but he's got a big smile on his face. And <laughs> it's a, I mean, there's some good stuff for sure. But um, ultimately, it's, it's not my favorite Eddie Murphy movie. Next, we have Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. I, 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 I got to go in the no pile. I don't have many in the no pile. I, this was boring. This movie was just really boring. I'm, I'm not sure why I picked it out. I think it's because it's the only one I hadn't seen out of the franchise. Uh, I think this franchise has probably run its course. If they do reboot it... I imagine they're going to have to do something really unique to really spice it up and bring it back. Probably will stay dormant for a while. Whether that spicing up as well means changing the entire cast um, might be a good move at that point. But um, yeah, this one, this was really tough to get through. All right, we have Edward Scissorhands. I am going to put this up here in big money, big prizes. I love it. I, I could, again, probably be persuaded to move this up to Top Dog. The 
this definitely is a very much of a continuation of, of Tim Burton's sort of style and film. And yet this still feels really fresh, even though we'd seen a few of his bigger budget movies at this point. I think because it just it has like a bit of a fairy tale quality to it, but it's I don't know, it's just the contrast of that suburbia lifestyle, the kind of perfect life, you know, or what some people might assume is the perfect life, just simple life. And you you've thrust in this element that's just so out of place and so all the contrast in the movie really works and is really really well done um, and the the musical score is great in this movie the, the, the theme song in this is, is really really uh, like enchanting like it sounds like it belongs in a in a fairy tale movie next we have get smart so this is a film that's borrowing heavily from well i guess more reimagining the old television show maxwell smart and agent 99 um and just okay usa i i do have some fond memories of the television show as as much as it's very much a product of its time and is not a big budget show or anything of that nature but it was just such a goofy show and simplistic in in premise and in um in its execution but still really enjoyable and and this is is certainly not bad but it just it it doesn't quite have the the charm that the original tv show did for me um it's it's yeah it's just it's it's okay it, it the there's a bit of a plot twist in it and it's like yeah it's okay whatever it's just it, it wasn't that exciting the twist and i don't know i think I, I, when it came out, I think there was a lot of push and, and drive to kind of get this to be this big franchise, but I think it kind of petered out quick. And it was, again, not because, like, Anne Hathaway is really good as 99, and um, uh, Steve Carell is, is really good as, as Maxwell Smart. They, they even, like, there's an element of their look that feels very similar to the original show's um, actors. Um, uh, Don Adams, uh, and I can't remember the name of the actress who played 99, but um, but it just it's just missing an element. Something about it just 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 feels kind of off. All right, Ghostbusters 2. I'm gonna put in big money, big prizes. I love it. Even though I had said before that I have nostalgia for this movie, I can do like I can understand that there are some elements that are just kind of mm, it's not quite as groundbreaking as the first movie in a lot of ways. It's, it's a little bit uh, rushed, it feels, at parts. Uh, it's kind of a little bit more cobbled together. It doesn't feel quite as cohesive. With that said, like I love the River of Slime stuff and the um, when they're on the street and they're blocking the other taxis and stuff and yelling at these these guys and, the, and, and so forth. I thought that was kind of fun. Uh, I like the slime... Um, I can't remember what they're called now, the like the slime shooters that they use um, to move the Statue of Liberty. Like there are some really clever and fun ideas here for sure. But I can see where the uh, there's a much higher nostalgia for the first film. Um, In a Valley of Violence. This this movie I didn't know much about. I think I was just looking for something in the Western genre and saw something that was a little bit newer. I think this is a 2019 release or I can't remember now, right off the top of my head, but it's uh, it's all right. It, it wasn't too bad. It was Ethan Hawke's character is very much like a Clint Eastwood type drifter who comes in town. Um, John Travolta is sort of the main antagonist in this. I don't know if he's really channeling any other actors from other movies in in the in the genre, but um, you know he plays a, enough of a despicable person that you kind of hope he gets. What's coming to him by the end it's decent uh, justice league doom i'm gonna put this one up here big money big prize i love it this is a this was a pretty fun movie um batman is very much the focus of it and it's kind of interesting because the justice league are well i don't want to say too much i guess <laughs> i don't want to say too much but the justice league are definitely in this movie but it's batman's planning and actions that 
cause a lot of grief, we'll say. Um, and the animation is decent. Uh, yeah, it's it's good. It's it's worth watching. I like Flash in this movie. He has a pretty important um, sequence for him in the movie. It's, that's kind of neat. All right, uh, Live, Die, and Repeat, um, which is also, I believe, called originally Edge of Tomorrow. Well, sorry, Live, Die, Repeat, I believe, is the original title. Got changed to Edge of Tomorrow for the North American release. And I think it, it got re-released as Live, Die, Repeat um, as the title. This is a really, really clever movie. Um, you know, Tom Cruise seems to have a, a really good handle on what makes good action and good action pieces or sequences and this movie it feels kind of like a little bit similar to a, um, a Mission Impossible movie in a few ways but still feels different enough that you don't feel like you're just watching something like oh is this just sort of like kind of part of that universe or something these sci-fi elements are well done in this they they do feel a little over the top but still within uh, within reason, especially the the military side of things in the movie. Um, Bill Paxton is in this, and he's <laughs> Bill Paxton just always plays like a great, like smarmy, you know, character that you just don't like for the most part. And he's in a few movies where he doesn't play a character of that nature, but he just plays that role so well, and he plays that again in this um, as I, don't know, I think he's a general or a drill sergeant something. Um, I am having a tar hard time deciding where to place this because I, I could see, like, it is a very well done movie. And Emily Blunt is really cool in this movie. <laughs> She's really, really awesome. Like, her character is really, really neat. Wow. I. Ah, oh, what the heck? Let's put it up here. Live, die, repeat. I think it's, it's definitely an underrated movie in some regards because people probably don't know too much about it. I was very pleasantly surprised watching it the first time I had seen it a number of years back, and then rewatching it now, I was still really completely glued to the set watching the whole way through. Really enjoyed it. Okay, Love and Basketball. This, another movie again, I, I had seen chunks of this uh, on TV, but not the whole thing. I'd seen probably about 60, 65% of it. I'm putting in big money, big prizes. I love it. I, I really liked this movie. I, I was surprised at how much I liked it. I thought it was neat to see these two characters grow up, um, live a life that was affected so much by basketball and how being a basketball player really affected their, um, their social circles, their behaviors, their attitudes, and how different it was being a male athlete and a female athlete. And the, the two leads are great in this. They, they really portray their characters really well and are believable. And um, yeah, and the, the ending outcome is probably different than you might expect, which is really neat. And it does try to tie into a bit of a historical piece. Um, I don't quite think the timing of this movie um, was quite in the same trajectory of, of when it released. But it's portraying maybe about a seven, eight year window, um, I think, seven, eight year, year window of reality. Uh, so it's like this movie came out like seven or eight years after what the years it was trying to portray, if that makes any sense, which it probably doesn't. But anyways, it's a good movie. All right, Porco Rosso. Um, I heard a lot of good things about this movie. Um, it is part of the... Um, uh, Studio Ghibli line, Ghibli, Ghibli, whatever you prefer. I prefer to say Ghibli. I think I'm going to put OK USA. This has um, some really nice animation. It, it really does. And some, some really great music, which again, that studio just seems to really have a, an amazing handle on three elements. And that is the soundtracks, the, um, the world building, it always feels like their stories just have this really amazing ability to portray something that should be so normal or so simple in such a fantastical way. And then usually the animation is, is just amazing. Those three elements always seem to take center stage in their films. Sometimes the dialogue's not so great. Sometimes the plot of uh, the overall plot's not great. 
but those elements almost always seem to show up in a Studio Ghibli film. This movie was it was okay. There, <laughs> the ending is 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 interesting. <laughs> it's very strange, but um, it was neat to see kind of like sort of um, I would say like World War II style airplanes um, as as sort of the key element of the films. And um, yeah, I, it's not my favorite, but it was still decent. Punch Drunk Love. Um, this is a weird movie in a lot of ways, uh, but I, I still, yeah, I'm kind of debating on this one too. You know, I think I'm going to put it here. I think it would be money, big prizes. I love it. It, it because it was such a weird movie and I can't even like, it's, it's sort of a comedy, but it's sort of a romance. Um, Adam Sandler doesn't really come across as Adam Sandler in this. He sort of does. He's kind of dopey and, and goofy and in and, and his own kind of way but the 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 main piece of the plot is basically he just he seems like he's this kind of really i don't know if it's dissociative issue that he has but he meets but he kind of falls in love with somebody but he he has the, there's like this side story that philip seymour hoffman ends up um filling in on the side story of something he does because he's lonely but he doesn't want to project that he's lonely it's it's interesting i think if i watch it again i probably understand it even better but um yeah it was it was good all right we have snitch i'm gonna put snitch in okay usa not a ton to say here um just kind of a simplistic action movie um we're gonna go with your name after this we're gonna put your name in okay usa um very interesting elements to this movie um I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm really not going to say much here. Um, but I will say the animation in this movie. It's, it's amazing to think of just how far um, animation has come uh, in so many different ways. Um, obviously, we have computer animation and we have like uh, North American animators make things look a little bit different, maybe than say European um, and then Japanese or Korean or Chinese animators. But this animation is just gorgeous. Like the lighting is, is really nice in it. Um, there's just a lot of, um, nature plays a huge element in this, this movie, in, a, in some regards. And it's just, it, you almost can feel it, even though it's totally animated, you can feel it. And there's a nice blending of the computer animated with more of the hand-drawn style. It, it comes out pretty well. These, the plot is a little bit confusing, a little bit weird, but, um, still like when you get to that last, like. 15 20 minutes of the movie so much happens like so much um visceral things are going on it's it's really neat all right and finally we have this is spinal tap this is going into the top dog section <laughs> i had seen spinal tap uh, a while back uh, this is the first time i think i'd seen it and i want to say must be eight years something like that, seven eight years um I, I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed this. Um, it's just, it's infinitely quotable in so many ways, just bizarre, but lovable characters. Um, and just the elements that they, they bring together to make this actually work is just, it's so much fun. Um, you certainly have to have a, a mindset of, of wanting to watch this. Uh, but I just, I can't imagine like how much I, I enjoyed this. Um, yeah, it was just, it was super, super fun to watch. All right. I want to say thank you very much. If you stuck with me all the way through for all 12 months, I really enjoyed going back and looking at all the films that I watched this year. I know initially I said I was going to make a huge chart with everything on it. I think I'm going to not, I think I want to just kind of keep, keep things in their own spot and just reflect on them on my own kind of changed my mind on that um i think it's just for one it'll be so huge it'll be so hard to see them anyways i think the ok usa category particularly is going to be so overwhelmed with with photos because there there's so many that fit there and big money big prizes has a pretty solid amount too but um, i'm really satisfied with where placements are for things and i think it was really fun to um, just go through each month on its own individually as is 
So thank you again for joining me. I really enjoyed all of this time I've put into this. I hope you have too. If you have any comments you want to leave, by all means, please do so. I will see you down that road. Thank you. Take care.